Welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. It's a new month. We've got a new Blind Box Comics to open up and show off. Now, what's Blind Box Comics? It's one of the numerous geek services out there that delivers a box of geeky goodness to your doorstep. In this case, a small, you know, small box, but it's a box. Uh, Blind Box Comics is you know, geared towards comics, as the title suggests. Um, it's got three different versions. There's a main one where there's a bunch of comics, like a, usually a four or five of them, first issues, maybe second issues. They're curated that you might enjoy. Now, there's a second version of that where it, they do a variant every single month. The variants themselves have variants, which is kind of cool. And then there's a third option, which is a combination of the two. I go for the third option because it's always fun to see what folks have in store. Now, we're going to open this up. We're going to show things off and see what's inside. Now, there's a lot of cool things that I think Blind Box does. Is one, uh, it gears a lot towards indie comics, and then there's often autographs in there, and you know even some variants towards the comics that you get, which is pretty, pretty, pretty cool if you ask me. So let's dive in and go through everything inside. All right, first we've got comic from uh, Dark, Dark Horse Comics, Peter J. Tomasi, Ian Betram, House of Penance. I know we got a rather positive review on our site. Uh, it's not just the haunt, house that's haunted. Winchester House, famous for its original owner's bizarre compulsion to incorporate a multitude of architectural curiosities, but as the bereaved Sarah Winchester's workers toil on stairways to nothing endorsed nowhere, a mysterious stranger arrives, and he could make Sarah's demons all too real. Uh, now, this is kind of a, a comic based off of real world story. The Winchester House is kind of famous as far as hauntings. They're actually going to be doing a movie of it. Uh, there's, uh, I forgot who just got cast in it, but it should be a fascinating one. Winchester as in Winchester Rifle, basically the heiress uh, to that fortune, went a little batshit insane and just kept on building onto her house. Uh, look it up. It's actually kind of fascinating. It's a great uh, piece of weird American history. The comic, I believe we gave a pretty positive review. I myself haven't read it, but overall, I believe it's uh, it's got some good uh, reviews about it. So check it out. Now this one, I can say I have reviewed and read. This one's Star Wars Poe Dameron. Uh, it's all new ongoing series uh, spinning out of Star Wars Force Awakens. Uh, it, you know, Poe is obviously the best fighter pilot in the Resistance. Uh, you know, quite famous in the Star Wars Force Awakens. One of the cool characters in it. So now they've got a comic series by uh, Charles Soule and Phil Noto. Uh, in the lead up to the series, if you've wondered who the hell Poe was talking to in the beginning of Star, Star Wars Force Awaken and why he was going after the map, this is the series for you. It's going all about that, diving deep into it uh, and giving you some more information about Poe. I highly recommend it if you like Star Wars Force Awaken. This is one you're going to have to see or going to have to read as it gives a lot of information about the character in the movie itself. There's a lot of unanswered questions that uh, get answered through it. Next, we got from Titan Comics, Samurai, The Isle with No Name, number one, uh, one of two. So, uh, as advertised, the terrible battle against the treacherous Akuma has been won, and the Empire is safe once more, but uh, Takio is set out for the mysterious unnamed island to continue his quest to finally discover the truth about his brother and his family, and the symbolic tattoo that saved his life. Um, you know, another comic, I myself haven't read it, I believe we do have a review, one of their contributors uh, reviewed it, so you can go to our site and check it out, but it's one that I know has gotten a lot of praise, the art's supposed to be fantastic, uh, highly, you know, kind of recommend it, really good, um, so yeah, so that's that, next up we've got... Jackpot. So uh, this is now interesting. So there's three comics potentially you could get, uh, all from Aftershock Comics. There's Jackpot, Rough Riders, and Black Eyed Kids. Um, I've read all three of them, so I got picked up Black Eyed Kids and Jackpot. But I'm going to kind of describe all of them. So Jackpot, uh, it's about the world's greatest con artists. Uh, there's a little twist at the end. It's it's actually an interesting start. Um, if you like Thieves of Thief of Thieves, which is a comic book series from Robert Kirkman, Skybound. If you like Ocean's Eleven, you're probably going to dig this comic. Uh, Ray Fox, uh, Marco Fela. Uh, first issue, uh, it was good. It didn't quite blow me away. The second issue, I think, stronger than the first. But uh, it was a very interesting start. 
The other one I got, Black Eyed Kids, number one. This was a uh, nice, cheap comic, only $1.99. Guy Major, Marshall Dillon. If you like horror series and like Damien's The Omen type of like, you know, freaky kids, that type of stuff, Black Eyed Kids for you, I couldn't tell you what the hell is going on. Uh, it's just a good horror comic. It's dark, you're alone, there's a knock, basically kids are getting like turned and murdering people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kooky, it's creepy, it's freaky. I liked it. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the, the second issue. I'm not a huge horror person, but I thought this was a fun comic uh, and you know well worth picking up, especially for the $1.99 price. The third comic, uh, Rough Riders, I think is the strongest of the three. Uh, it's a weird history with Theodore Roosevelt uh, ga gathering a group of folks, uh, including Annie Oakley, Harry Houdini, Jack Johnson, um, and they basically go uh, head to Cuba to go deal with uh, this weird alien technology that's been spotted. Um, the Yeah, I think of, like, the Dirty Dozen with actual historical characters. Rough Riders of the Three is, I think, my favorite, of, is definitely the favorite of the three, strongest of the comics. Uh, if you got that, you're, you're hopefully going to like it. The other thing I really like about Rough Riders is it plays off of real history, and the writer has done a lot of research to make things, uh, make sure things connect and, and fit within the story, and he does a really fantastic job of it. I know I wound up... Uh, basically Googling and, and wicking things for like an hour after reading it to see if the history is correct. So next, we've got the actual variant. So as I said, there's three variants. Um, it, Department H or, is a series from Dark Horse Comics, Matt Kint and Charlene Kint's uh, new series. Um, think of Abyss, but Murder Mystery is, I think, the best way to describe it. Uh, so there is... A whole bunch of variants in there. They've signed, sketch, painted on several of them, which makes things even more uh, variant of the variants. So let's crack this open. We're going to show off what's inside. Uh, this was a really, really cool comic, uh, which I dug a lot. So we're going to show this off. I don't know exactly how. I think this is just a straight-up variant of the variants. Nothing too special about it. Nope. No cards, nothing. Um, so this is just the straight-up variants of the comic. So no sketch, no signature, nothing. So I, that's cool. We can't win them all. Uh, so as I said, Department H, really, really cool series from Dark Horse from um, the Kinds. Uh, he's done some fantastic work, done some you know Marvel work, and uh, he had uh, mind management wrapped up. If you enjoyed mind management, you'll probably enjoy Department H. As I said, it's like the abyss with the murder mystery. Um, the cool thing on, on blind blind comics with their blind variants is, as I said, there's a bunch of different versions. Uh, sometimes there are uh, just straight-up coloring versions, maybe sketch version. One might have a 1,000 copies, one might have 500 copies, one might have 100 copies. So there's variants to the variants. Um, you know, with this, what I just showed off is pretty much the basic minimum that you're going to get. A whole bunch of comics, you get a variant comic. Sometimes you luck out, get some autographs, get the variant of the variants. Um, but overall, I you know I'm impressed again. It's got some good indie comics. You know, Aftershock is probably one that not many of you have checked out. Uh, Titan Comics, I guarantee, is one you probably have not checked out. Uh, you know, the most mainstream is the Poe Dameron um, comic, and then the House of Penance with Dark Horse. But uh, overall, you know, if you're a comic book fan, I highly recommend it. I think it's one of uh, the best services out there for comic fans, especially if you're into single comics. Go check it out. We've got a link underneath this video uh, for you to go sign up for next month's box. Of course, we're going to have a uh, video of that. It is a, a great group, a uh, great company, and I think they're doing some really neat stuff. So go check it out and sign up today. As always, thank you for watching. This is Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. You can catch us every single day at graphicpolicy.com. Of course, we're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky.